In 1969, during the height of the Vietnam War, 74 brave sailors were killed when the USS Frankie Evans collided with the HMAS Melbourne during a training exercise. Because of a military technicality, those sailors are not listed on the U.S. Vietnam War Memorial. That's just wrong. Today on The Question Is with Anthony Portentino, we will learn why and we will hear from those who are proudly trying to right that wrong. Today on The Question Is with Anthony Portentino, I'm joined by a survivor, a rescuer, and the son who lost his father because he was a sailor on duty and tragically lost. We also have the respected journalist who captured the story of the Frankie Evans and the not forgotten 74 brave sailors who did not come home. This is a true story with many chapters still to write and hopeful veterans and family members setting a course for a proper and just recognition. Steve, you were on deck of the Evans in 1969. Tell us what happened. Yeah. Thank you, Anthony, for allowing us to be here. And, and our story starts way before the actual event when we left Long Beach, uh, designated to go fight the war in Vietnam. But on the evening at hand, uh, I was a signalman of the watch uh, on the deck above the pilot house. We were in a uh, what's called a total darkened ship exercise along with the Melbourne, several other destroyers, and we were out front of the ship. Uh, about three in the morning, we initiated a turn to come to the plane guard position behind the uh, Melbourne. And in making that turn, we initiated a collision course. Uh, in that collision course, both ships tried to avoid the collision, but at the final minutes, the ship was actually T-boned and cut into two pieces. Uh, the forward ship, or the forward part of the ship, which I was on, uh, sank within three minutes. The after section stayed afloat, tied uh, next to the uh, Melbourne. How old were you? I was 21 years old at 21 the time. 21 years old at the time. And how long had you been in the Navy? I had been in a little over three years. Uh -huh. So you went right in, right out of high school? Actually, I was drafted into the Army, and I ran down and joined the Navy because I thought it would be a lot safer. Wow. And Randy, you were on one of the rescue vessels, uh, so I tell us about that piece. I was on board the USS Kearsarge, an aircraft carrier, which was part of the same exercise that the Evans was on. Uh, the Evans was one of our escort ships. Uh, they were with us on most of the um, uh, action that we were in. We were also on the same ports. Uh, at approximately 3 o'clock in the morning, I was in my uh, bunk, sound asleep, and all of a sudden this big aircraft carrier takes a, a turn, shakes, uh, we, we hit high speed, ship was shaking, captain ordered general quarters, we knew something was going on, we didn't know if all of a sudden we had uh, gone to World War III or what, but uh, we finally got word that the Evans had been struck and that helicopters needed to be launched, look for uh, uh, survivors, which unfortunately we didn't find any. Uh, Eventually, uh, that morning, we took on the survivors. Uh, it was a moment I'll never forget. I'll never forget also being on top of the carrier at the flight deck, looking down on what was left of the Evans, and that was a ship that I was very well familiar of, but there was only half of it there. Uh, Steve, how many sailors were on the Evans at the time? Uh, we had 278 was the ship's complement at the time. Um, Five were off the ship. Uh, fortunately, they were off getting dental work and other things. And then, of course, 74 were So were almost lost. a third of the crew. Almost a third of the crew. Um, were lost. Yes. Um, fire? Uh, there was no fire that I remember. It was a matter of, as, uh, like I try to say, uh, it's like a, uh, a semi-truck running over a Volkswagen. Uh, it, the ship rolled to the right and I was immediately found in the water. I tried to warn uh, my uh, partner, which was my recorder on watch with me. Uh, he was catapulted onto the flight deck of the Melbourne. 
And uh, at the very last second, uh, just before that occurred, uh, I hit the uh, intercom button and said, we're going to get hit. Uh, I had seen it when it was probably about uh, 300 yards away. And so how many sailors went into the water? Um, probably, I, you know, I don't know that exact number, but I would say probably half the ship. Half the ship went into the water and many yeah. did not come out. Right, 74. All, all of the, the uh, deaths were from the front half of the ship, none on the back half, thank goodness. Right. And Tim, your dad was on the ship. He was on duty and you, yeah, were, you were too. Yeah, my father was a radar man, so he was on duty trying to monitor the positions of the various ships in this uh, training exercise. And uh, the men who were on duty in the CIC, the command center, were all lost because of where that was really right at the center of the collision point. Wow. Um, and uh, how long had your dad served at the time? He had been in the Navy for about three years, and he had joined the Navy anticipating that he would be drafted, and so he chose to join the Navy and uh, serve our country in that way. And how long was he on the Evans? He had been on the Evans for a couple years. He had served most of his time in the Navy on the Evans. Wow. Um, Louise, you wrote a book. Uh, yes, American Boys. American Boys. Here's Louise's book. So. By Louise's book, <laughs> um, and you, you know, did not have a personal connection to this story, but a journalistic no. connection and a warm heart. I'm a uh, I'm a freelancer in Southern California. I was working for the North County Times, which is now San Diego Union Tribune. Mm -hmm. um, I am a freelancer because I stay home with my children during the week, and I work on weekends. I was covering an event and met Steve Krause at the at this event and he told me about his ship and I wrote a newspaper article and I um, if you read American Boys you'll know that three brothers were killed on the USS Frankie Evans and it was a story that piqued my interest so uh, from there I decided I wanted to write a book and it took me four years to turn it around the a uh, lot of research at the Naval Archives the National Archives the Nixon Library uh, tracking down some retired admirals and uh, finding anybody who had any information about this incident. And, uh, and my conclusion is that these names certainly belong on the Vietnam Veterans Memorial and there's ample proof. Right, we're gonna, uh, that, that's one of the hearts of the matter. And, and Steve, if you could walk us through that. The 74 sailors who were died during the Vietnam War are not on the Vietnam Memorial. Uh, that is correct. Um, and that's a tragedy on top of a tragedy, but tell us why they're not on okay. the, the Vietnam Memorial. The, the ship had actually been performing gunfire support just prior to uh, joining this training exercise and had left the combat zone, had rearmed in, in the Philippines, had met up with the CEDAW operation in Manila and then went out on the exercise. And after the training exercise, of course, we were going to go back to Vietnam for our next assignment. Uh, because the the accident or the occurred, and according to the DOD, they're following the their DOD Department of Defense. Department of Defense. Uh, because they're uh, following their their rules, which they say you must be uh, in a combat-related incident outside uh, inside the combat zone, you would therefore uh, be uh, included in the Vietnam War uh, listing. We. Um, we're outside that zone, so they are still holding fast that because we were there, our 74 are not allowed to be on the wall. Which also, you know, if, if we go any further and we look and we say, well, is that true for all of the names that are on the wall? We find out that's not true. Exceptions have been made. Right. And Louise, it's your argument that there's ample justification. Yes. Uh, well, the thing we have to remember is the USS Frankie Evans left Long Beach, California to fight the war in Vietnam. That's number one. Number two, uh, when you talk about the CEDAW exercise, in the op order for the exercise are small, tiny instructions um, that require the American ships to provide surveillance of enemy vessels at that time. Uh, Russia was supplying the South Vietnam Vietnamese enemies 
and the, the Viet Cong and North, I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. No. I'm nervous. Um, it's an emotional subject. Well, it is. I, I apologize. But they were, um, there were instructions in there to, prov to jam enemy ra radios. Um, that was very small detail in this CEDO exercise. Uh, the reason the CEDO exercise was held off the coast of Vietnam was uh, in 1966, as the war was heating up in Vietnam, the uh, United States was still participating in these multinational exercises. And the admirals were saying, wait a minute, you know, the uh, demand for naval gunfire support almost always exceeded the supply of, of availability, available vessels to perform those duties. Um, so essentially they said, well, we're going to do these exercises in an area so close to the combat zone that we could go in if needed. Um, so, and on top of that, the Evans left Subic Bay to participate in the CEDO exercise with a full war allowance of ammunition. You do not need that for an anti-submarine warfare exercise. You need that when you are going to go provide naval gunfire support. So my argument is the Navy knew the Evans was on call. They knew the Evans, along with all the other American ships, were there providing some form of surveillance or show of force, because there's a lot of documentation within the Nixon administration papers uh, regarding this let's get our American ships over there in the South China Sea. They were trying to end the war. They were trying to reignite the peace talks. Um, you know, so at the end of the day, when the Frankie Evans, the front half of the Frankie Evans sank in, um, in 1,100 fathoms of water, the Frankie Evans was awarded a Vietnam Service Medal. Randy's ship, the Kearsarge, was awarded a Vietnam Service Medal. All the American vessels that were there were, were awarded this medal. To get that medal, you have to be doing something related to the Vietnam conflict. You, that was just right. very straightforward. Um, and had the Evans crew survived, they would have all gotten the same recognition. Yes, um, but they didn't, th you know, the 74 sailors survived in an operation that had ties to the Vietnam War, right. as evident in the Frankie Evans service record. The um, criteria for inclusion on the Vietnam Veterans Memorial mirrors <laughs> the criteria for the Vietnam Service Medal. Um, and the Navy and the Department of Defense will say over and over again that this happened outside of the official combat zone for Vietnam. That combat zone was only drawn for tax purposes. And they still draw combat zones for tax purposes. They don't, um, it is not strategic. It's not strategic. for military activity. It's, it's for not tax strategic. purposes. Mm -hmm. And um, to say that the Seventh Fleet uh, was only on duty when they were parked off the, the gun line firing guns or in the Tonkin Gulf launching bombers uh, is a fallacy. They were there. The fact that they were there, they were in the war. Right. And Tim, um, there's a Frankie Evans group that's made up of survivors, rescuers, journalists, family members. Um, when did that begin um, to start to get organized? Well, it started many years ago. It involves even people who served on the ship in the, uh, the 50s, the late 40s, when it originally was commissioned at, towards the end of World mm -hmm. War II. And I just you know, found out about, in the early 2000s, one of the uh, spouses of one of the survivors uh, found some information about me on the Internet and reached out to me. And so I've been involved for the last... Uh, 12 years or so, and really we've been really working hard to right what we see as a wrong. Uh, first I approached Congressman Adam Schiff, who was my congressman, and he was uh, very uh, concerned about this wrong, and so he's been fighting ever since to try and bring these names onto the Vietnam Wall and has met with um, several uh, Department of Defense. He's met directly with the right with and the Department who, of Defense. who just as Louise mentioned, can make an exception to these uh, requirements, and the president can then ratify, uh, yeah, through an executive order, add those names. And so right. it's a very simple action that they could take that would bring so much comfort and and closure to these families and these survivors of this horrific incident. You know, um, we just touched the beginning part of the USS Frankie Evans. Uh, when we come back, we'll hear about uh, the progress that's been made in California and the steps that the family and survivors and community have come together to properly recognize the Frankie Evans. Be back.
Nothing ever gonna make this world better If we don't start believing That love really, really, really is the answer Everybody join hands cause it's time now We're back on The Question Is with Anthony Portentino talking about the USS Frankie Evans and the 74 sailors who went down tragically during the Vietnam War but are not on the Vietnam War Memorial. Steve, we talked a little bit early about the zone, this arbitrary line that was drawn, and the, the Department of Defense is saying because the tragedy happened just outside the line, um, they're not going to list these 74 sailors who were doing military duty during a war. Could you elaborate on that for us? Yes, sir. Anthony, that line has arbitrarily been changed from time to time. Uh, uh, I think as you remember way back, uh, it, we were never in Laos and Cambodia for years and years and years. We, were in, Laos sudden, and we were in Laos and Cambodia? Yeah, and then all of a sudden, yes, we were in Laos and Cambodia, and they changed the line to include that. Um, there are, are names on the wall of, of uh, uh, you know, veterans that were killed during that war that were killed outside that line. Um, you know, Louise can give some more specifics to that, but uh, the one that, that, that initiated this was 58 Marines were added to the wall in 1985. When they left uh, Vietnam, Da Nang, they flew to Hong Kong, they did a 10-day R&R, and their plane crashed on takeoff from Hong Kong on return. And uh, uh, then President Reagan uh, forced through that the DOD again include them on the wall, and they were added. And Louise can tell you the most recent ones now that have been added. There, yeah. Keep. there is a last year, for example, they added the names. And, and I want to just preface this by saying this is. Um, this is morbid work to have to go and look at see and see how people died and are their names on the Vietnam Memorial. Um, we, this group is not saying that these people's names do not belong on the memorial. We're just using examples. Right. And one example, most recently, last year, they added to the Vietnam Memorial the name of a gentleman who died of a heart attack in a hospital in Guam. Guam is way outside of the combat zone. Um, there have been other incidents. There was a plane crash. Four gentlemen who died in a plane crash out of the, uh, out of the Philippines. Their names were added in 2012. Uh, I bring up many of these examples in my book, American Boys. Right. And the, po the point is it's, it's men and women died during a war mm -hmm. serving our country, and they should be recognized. The problem is the Department of Defense and the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Fund, because Jan Scruggs has spoke out about this at congressional hearings. They've said things like, this is going to open the floodgates. If we add these 74 names, who else's name are we going to have to add? Or we don't want to make an exception because it was a training exercise or it was an accident. Well, 25% of the names on the Vietnam Memorial are there because of accidents. 30% or more are friendly fire, so that's not a really an argument. And and the next the next one is you know if you want if you need a check in the box with the Frankie Evans for adding these 74 names to the memorial, the check in the box is the Vietnam Service Medal. To get that medal, you right. have to be doing something related to the war. And the Department of Defense and the Navy has not shown any desire to go back and see how all the American ships were awarded this medal. We've asked them to, I've asked them to, and the response is always this jumbled up, you know, oh, it's a training exercise, or they'll say, oh, what's the big deal? It's only, you know, it, it's names on a wall. It's not going to bring them back. And I said, well, you just made the argument. It's names on a wall, so put them on the wall. So, Tim, um, the families, the veterans, the rescuers um, have all come together to form an association. What are some of the activities that the association is doing and in California recently we've had some very exciting news happen. Right, so Assemblymember Holden who represents this local area, he fought to have the state pass mm -hmm. a resolution in favor of these names being added to the wall in mm -hmm. DC which then created momentum to, be, to go before a committee that decides who is on the California wall. And interestingly that committee has to date only 
had added names who had been added to the national wall, but they found our arguments and our passion so compelling that they agreed late last year to add the names of our 70, well, of the Californians, the 22 Californians of the 74 to the California Vietnam Wall. And that was just done in a ceremony a few weeks ago. And so that was a really nice moment for the families of the, the Californians. But now we're looking for that same recognition at the national at the level. And Randy, you were in Sacramento for that yes, ceremony I was. as well. Right. Um, I got started with this. Uh, it was a day, June 3rd, 1969, I'll never forget. But over the years, I kept some uh, mementos. And about five years ago, I was going through my garage looking for something else and found a picture of the Evans. And it just brought back all those memories of that day and the days after with these, these gentlemen. Uh, so I looked up the Evans and got the Survivors Association's website, sent them a copy of the picture, and they invited me to Long Beach. Every year, the survivors and friends and families get together on June 3rd, and the names of the 74 are on a plaque mm -hmm. there, there in the harbor. And in talking to them afterwards at a lunch, I realized I'd, I never knew these names weren't on the wall. So. Tim and I both have Adam Schiff as our congressman, and so I started calling and, and trying to do what I can do because, as you said, it's a wrong that needs to be corrected. Mm -hmm. And as an American, I'm very strong about that, and I want to see that in my lifetime. Right. And Tim, you're not the only child of a descendant, a survive, you know, surviving relative. Um, it must be awful hard to heal, knowing that the proper recognition isn't being done. Right, so you know these family members were, were all, many of us come to not only those June 3rd memorial services that Randy mentioned, but the annual reunions which are held all over the country uh, each year. It's in a different place. The last one was in Seattle. And it's just an opportunity for, for providing support to mm -hmm. each other and and also for me you know it's like i have a new family because i have this family of the people who served on the ship with my father and who knew him and uh you know and even just uh last fall i met several people who i had not met before but had served with my father and were able to tell me some stories about his time on the ship so well and steve uh do you still talk to some of your other uh mates on the ship? Uh, uh, almost daily. Almost uh, daily. Almost daily. I mean communication uh, one way or another. And I just received a call on Sunday from somebody who had served with one of our guys in a previous assignment before he came to the uh, Evans and he was amazed that this had never happened and, and so it, it is spreading uh, uh, you know quite rapidly now the story's getting out there we're getting good press um, you know, so so we want this to keep going forward, and we have plans to do that. What's too. the next step? Uh, our next step is is we have uh, asked Congressman Schiff's office that uh, we need to get a, a a bill in the NDAA, which is the National Defense Authorization Act, that 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 makes a demand on the DoD to do the right thing. And uh, we've been very patient and we've made recommendations and we've had petitions and we've had bills and we've had a lot of things and we've had a lot of discussion. But, but we think it's going to come down to uh, forcing the DOD to go ahead and do this. And uh, we, we have feel very strong about the congressional support and uh, every day we're getting more and more congressional representatives on board. And you're working with other veterans groups as well, right? Yes, uh, last year we got endorsements by the VFW and the American Legion and uh, so uh, and uh, the, uh, the American uh, Vietnam uh, Veterans Association all, all uh, at their annual uh, reunions that they have in their national conventions uh, did an endorsement of this. And is California going to communicate with Washington that what took place here? Yes, the uh, original resolution that Assemblymember Holden sponsored uh, communicated to Washington our position and we're continuing now that they've been added to the Sacramento 
Vietnam Veterans Wall were continuing to mm -hmm. let people know in Sacramento, I mean, DC, DC. Uh, what's been taken and what action's been taken. And people in other congressional districts can also write their congress member and ask them to join with Congressman Schiff um, to pressure the Department of Defense, right? So if you're home, um, pick up the phone, call your congress member and say, why isn't the Evans uh, crew on the wall of the Vietnam Memorial? Do that. Um, so that's important to keep the pressure on from the whole state, mm -hmm. not just right. one congressional office. Louise, um, how do you see this chapter, the next chapter in your book? Is there going to be a sequel? Uh, there will probably not be a sequel. I will probably ch change the ending a little bit, the afterward. Um, last year, at the you know, as this book went to publication, uh, there was a sense of Congress amendment attached to this defense spending bill for 2015 and that never passed the Senate and was not therefore not signed by the president and from there the Department of Defense didn't consider this at all and just threw it off the table because it was there for a while you mm -hmm. know we have um, virtually every lawmaker in the United States of America according to an explanatory statement that was attached to the 2015 spending bill every lawmaker in this country believes this needs to happen numerous steve mentioned the organizations but numerous municipalities and states are adopting resolutions urging the department of defense to do the right thing and these are states and cities where some of these 74 sailors came from right because the sailors are not all from california oh, no, how no, many no, states are we touched 26 26 yeah. states were touched and, by the evans tragedy so yeah. uh so there there is definitely a lot of support and 2016, we're looking at the defense spending bill, and we're not dropping the issue. Um, I'm a journalist. I did all the research. I started off writing this book about these three brothers that were killed on this ship. I thought it was interesting, the story. I'd met the mother right before she passed away, and I write about that in American Boys. I went from there to doing the research to figuring out, hey, they're, they're really, they're right. They're not just a bunch of veterans right. saying they, they're, they're, they deserve something. It's they, they really do. They've earned right. it. Um, and right now, the Department of Defense and the Navy has condemned these 74 sailors to obscurity. And, uh, and that's what this is about. This is about uh, the fact that these men were no different than those names you see on the Vietnam Veterans Memorial today. They were American boys. They were sent 10,000 miles away to fight in a war. That's why the Evans was there. The Evans left Long Beach not to participate in some exercise. They left to fight the war in Vietnam. Steve, um, a lot of veterans don't like to talk about the war. Um, this is important to you to, yes. to get the message out. Yeah. Um, you lost friends. Right. You lost a dad. Um, what do you feel inside? They were my brothers, and, and they belong on the wall with all the other uh, noble, you know, veterans that are on that wall. And uh, we didn't go thinking, "Oh, we're going to get killed." You know, we went to fight for to do country. our duty yeah. and fight for what we thought was right. They did the same thing, and now for them to be ignored, it, it's just it, it's an unbelievable thing that that it takes pressure to make people do the right things. Right, Randy, uh, you said before you remember the night uh, vividly. Vividly. The, most, the, the thing I remember most was as the sun was coming up, I'm standing on the flight deck next to a guy, I don't even know who he was, but I looked down on that ship, the ocean was like glass, and it was a moment of I wanted to pray, but I didn't know how to pray at that moment because it was such a shocking scene. And I knew men had died down there. Right. Seventy-four sailors died in 1969 on the USS Frankie Evans. We were at war. They should be on the war memorial in Washington. If you're at home, pick up the phone, call your congressman, call your senator, help the families and the survivors of the Evans have peace. Thanks for joining us on The Question Is with Anthony Portantino.